Okay, so what we have here is a sand auger. I'm going to show you a couple of different techniques of coring and soon we'll go into the mangrove swamp and do a totally different one. But this is called a sand auger and obviously it's, it's particularly useful in sandy environments. You'll see, you notice you've got the blades on here and it, when you twist this, it cuts down into the sediment and brings the sediment up into the chamber and preserves the sediment in the chamber. So I'm going to do this first so you can see what we get out of this sort of core. So you can see as we bring up the core, the sediment is preserved in the chamber. We then can collect that sediment for sampling. We can do colour analysis on this using a thing called a Munsell colour chart. We can collect any shells for dating. And you notice that all the sediment's preserved inside the chamber. Well, what I'm doing now is I'm changing the auger. So I'm taking the handle off. Straight away we're into a clay sediment. So now I'm using what's called a clay auger. Now if you look at this, you'll see the blades are on the outside of the chamber this time. So the clay will then be removed up in, into the chamber. But this type of auger is particularly useful in clay because it makes it very easy to clean the auger. It's very hard to get clay out of a sand auger. So you, now you'll see that this one, heading down into the clay, very dense clay substrate. Okay, so you can see the very dense clay being preserved on the, the outside of the chamber, making it easy to remove sediment for samples. Again, doing color analysis, grain size, and collecting material that's needed. The difference between this and the sand auger, we have the teeth on the outside, pulling the sediment up into the chamber, as opposed to the sand auger, which had teeth on the inside, preserving the material inside the chamber, catching it, making it very easy to remove the clay once we've sampled. Okay, what we have here is called a Russian desection corer. This is, this is particularly useful for very soft, muddy sediments. And in a moment, we're going to go in the mangrove swamp and put it down in some of the mangrove mud. And this is a particularly useful tool as when we bring it up, it brings up a complete half section of what is being cored. So the way that it works, you'll see that you've got the lovely point down here. We push that down into the mud with the blade, this is called closed. So at the moment, this, the, the core is closed. You know, when I do this, you'll see that we've got this barrel. That is where the sediment will be retained. So when it's closed, we push this down into the sediment. There's a blade running across this side. So we completely submerge this into the sediment up to the top of the barrel. We then turn it. The blade cuts into the sediment, continues to cut around. And inside here, it's preserved the sedimentary record for that 50 centimeters that we've pushed it in. Then we take it out of, the, of the, the mud, we bring it to the surface, where we open it up, and you'll see later on a complete half section retained on this blade, which we then can then uh, wrap up and preserve for analysis back in laboratories. Oh, that's oh, not better. Ah, see, much better close on that, so we didn't hit any root material. No. All right. So then pass it over to Lyndon. This is this is the exciting part for us people <laughs> who like mud. This is like Christmas. We get to open a brand new present. Oh, it's still a lot of root. Oh, not bad though. Yeah, it's a good one. Charcoal layers. Yeah. You can see a lot of organic material, which is part and parcel of being in a mangrove swamp. But you can see some darker laminations running across the core. They're quite likely to be charcoal layers, which have been smeared as we've turned this around. So now we're going to take this sample and as gentle as you possibly can, but often it's very tricky because it's so muddy, is get it inside this PVC pipe, which is called a cradle. Then we can wrap up this core and take it back to the lab. Putting down another length, so so far we've only collected up to here which is 50 centimetres. So we've measured up another 50 centimetres, so we'll push it down to that level. And that way we've collected the next part of the section, following on the base from that one that we previously caught. Mm -mm. 
That's it. So you can still see that organic rich layer, but as we're getting further down the core, you can see an increase in that grey, that's clay. Here you can see that clay mud in the mud increasing. Yep. When we get to this level, we've got a sandy mud. And you see all those little white specks? These are shells. So now, between the three cores, you can see we've got a complete section. We've got the clay substrate, and we can, which would have been the basement level, some early stage of, of landform, possibly a mud flat. Then we've had sea level come up. We've had the deposit of the sandy shelly material. Those shells will be able to send off for radiocarbon dating to find out when that was occurring. Then at the top of that sequence, we can see you've got the increase of mud again until we get to the organic rich mud with the mangrove swamp developing on top. 